Carmel. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I know it's been a long time, but today I'm here with a chit chat get ready with me video. Um, so yeah, I'm already starting my eyebrows and my eyelids are already primed. This is going to be Valentine's Day edition. So I'm thinking about, I'm going to attempt to do um, like a red look. All the products that I use will be listed down below. I don't know if you guys know, but I did launch my Snatch and Highly Favored uh, merchandise so definitely if you're interested in getting a t-shirt a sweatshirt check out my storefront it should pop up below this video um, but if it doesn't then it'll be linked down below in the description box and yeah all support is welcome and appreciated so yeah let's get into this video so since this is Valentine's Day edition um, I wanted to do something kind of Valentine's Day themed and yeah, we're going to be talking about being alone on Valentine's Day, um, how to cope with that. So, yeah, I know between like cuffing season and the holiday season and um, all of that, if you aren't in a relationship or if you don't have like a strong family and friend friends kind of net or foundation it is super easy to feel alone and then I feel like Valentine's Day is just like the cherry on the top of all of that plus it's just like winter and um you're indoors all the time and you know like like, like I said if you're a single it could be a pretty hard thing to kind of deal with me personally, I have had dates on Valentine's Day and I have been single on Valentine's Day. This year in particular, I do have somebody, um, but I have had, I've spent more Valentine's Day, Valentine's Days <laughs> alone than um, as a single compared to being in a relationship. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's easy to kind of feel alone and just kind of left out I guess you can say and so I do want to start by like making a distinction between like being alone and then like loneliness um, because there is a difference I feel like so I guess the official definition of loneliness is sadness because one has no friends or basically a lack of companionship so yeah loneliness is um I see it more as a lack of an emotional connection or emotional interaction, whereas um, being alone, the actual definition of being alone is having no one else present. So basically in a physical sense, right now I'm filming this video and no one's here, I'm alone, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm lonely. And so... If you kind of have the blues and you're feeling down, definitely kind of like try to pinpoint like where is it coming from? Are you feeling down because you're physically, you're alone, like in a physical sense? Or are you just like emotionally disconnected from others? And it's possible to be both, honestly. So you can have people around you and be lonely. Um... And you can be by yourself and be lonely. Or you can be by yourself and just be chilling. Alright, y'all had to figure out what I was doing with that red eyeshadow. Um, but yeah, basically what I was saying that is the difference between loneliness and being alone. And it's important to know the difference. Um, I feel like a lot of people automatically assume that if they don't have somebody or yeah, if they don't have like a physical tangible um companion that they can't basically participate so yeah it's important to know that you know there's just other ways to experience and partake in the exchange of love so if you have family if you have a good relationship with your family you know you can love on them if you have friends and you can love on them. Um, I mean, if you come from a more religious type of background, 
within most religions, honestly, um, one of the most basic principles within that is that God is love. So, like, like I said, if you don't have anyone, there's still other ways to exchange love with people around you. If you don't have anyone around you, if you have hobbies, you can pour your love into hobbies. There's so, we're, we live in a time where it's just like so many people in need overall. Like there's so many ways that you can volunteer or, you know, find some place to deposit the love. And one thing about it, um, as I kind of just continue on my own journey of self-love and just self-discovery and, you know, all of that kind of good stuff and learning about the law of attraction and um again the bible given it shall be given given unto you With whatever you put out in the atmosphere it will come back to you so as long as you're making the conscious effort to love on other people or to do good by other people you may not like have that relationship that you want right now but in some way, you will receive that love back to you. So I think it's just important. Just focus on the act of love in general. And finding new ways to show love. Regardless of who's receiving it, put more focus on the actual act. And I feel like that will do a better job at combating any feelings of um, loneliness. And if you don't have none of that... So if you don't have no family, if you don't have no friends, um, if you don't have no hobbies, <laughs> if you don't want to go out and give to the community or give to others, find ways to love on yourself. Find ways to pour that love back into you. Um, I feel like anyways, before you should be out here trying to love anybody, you already need to be figuring out how to love yourself. Yeah, for me, one of my biggest things with like dating and stuff like that. Uh, how can I expect you to be good to me or to love on me if you can't even do it for yourself? And it's the same thing. Like a lot of us, we're just so eager and in such a hurry to just love somebody. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se, but a lot of us are empty ourselves and if my cup is already empty, how can I expect to pour into somebody else's cup? I think a lot of people kind of ignore that um, just because, I don't know what I'm looking for. They're just in such a hurry to just have this exchange of love. Because, I mean, honestly, it's kind of, especially with women, it's, um, yeah, especially with women, we're already just kind of socialized to... For love and to, to love on a man or to be in a relationship. That's always kind of put, you know, as a top priority in our lives. So I understand, like, how people are just so caught up on wanting to be in love and experience love and want to be in a relationship and all this other stuff. And it's important that you just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. I'm using a liquid lipstick. For my lid color. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Hopefully it don't it doesn't like crack or anything. Start breaking apart. Um, but yeah, let's focus on loving ourselves first before we start being in a hurry to love someone else. Like let's learn about the things that we like, what we want, so that we can communicate that um efficiently to somebody else um when we when we're put in that situation make sure that you can communicate everything that you love about yourself so that they can reciprocate it and love you the way that you need to be loved because just because you're in a relationship with someone doesn't automatically mean that you're immune from being lonely if so many people in relationships right now that are still lonely because again they don't know how to love themselves and they can't tell their partner how to love them and therefore it's just not the relationship that um 
you were hoping for it to be. But if you are in a situation um, or if you are single and you do feel lonely, like it's okay. But like sometimes people will try to make you feel bad for being lonely. But I feel like it's normal to want. Don't, we weren't created to be like solely independent beings. So I think wanting that, you know, having that yearning to be with someone is a natural feeling so you know don't allow people to make you feel bad about being alone or make you feel bad um, for being lonely but if you are in that place make sure you know your triggers like make sure you're not putting yourself in situations where that loneliness is gonna constantly be brought up and again that goes back to knowing yourself learning how to love on yourself if you know your triggers it's easier to identify situations um to avoid putting yourself in so that those feelings of loneliness aren't constantly being brought up um so i know for a lot of people social media is a trigger for literally everything these days like any issue you're dealing with I don't know what's going on with this little color in the middle, but um, yeah. <laughs> Any little issue you're dealing with, if you get on social media, more than likely, it's going to trigger you. You're going to have some type of issue. Um, So definitely, like, if you know social media is a trigger for you, stay off of it. And I know it's hard because... What do I do? I know it's hard because social media is just like such a part of like modern day life now it's hard to just like completely um remove yourself from it but i mean stay off social media if possible especially like if you're single on valentine's day and you you're already feeling some type of way about it and it's not even here yet stay off social media do not get on social media especially the day of but if you need to take the full week, then stay off of it. Because you already know it's going to be people, pictures of people booed up. It's going to be memes targeting your insecurities. And you're just going to be more upset in the end. Another thing I think it was important when you're dealing with um, loneliness is... I'm trying to figure out how to say this. <laughs> but it's important... To not isolate yourself. And I know that's kind of like, duh. Well, if like, I know it's kind of like, well, if I had somebody to spend time with or to not be isolated from, then it, I wouldn't be lonely to begin with. But I'm talking about, I guess I'm mainly speaking on like loneliness for for being, from being single or not being in a relationship. If you're at that part, point where it's like you feel bad about it or you feel lonely because you don't have a boo or whatever don't isolate yourself um again like i said earlier there's other ways to exchange love it doesn't you know make sure you stay in contact with friends and family if you are feeling down about it or find other singles to um interact with because most of the time you're not the only one that's going to be single so find somebody else that's single and then y'all can plan something to do single people stuff with that's what I do. Or that's what I've done in the past. Don't isolate yourself. Even if you have to hang out by yourself. So you don't have no friends. You don't have no family. You don't know no other singles to hang out with. Do something at least by yourself. Learn how to hang out and be comfortable by yourself. I know this is hard for a lot of people. Um, but it's important just to get fresh air. Especially when dealing with like this time of the year. Um... With the weather, it's winter time. A lot of times it's hard to get fresh air. Like, just try to get out and do something if possible. Because the more isolated you are, the more time on your hands you have to think about whatever the issue is. What You know, think about being single, being lonely, whatever may have you. And, yeah, I just feel like it doesn't help the cause. Because I used to kind of be like that where it's like, oh, there's nothing to do or 
um it's so boring i don't know what to do by myself you can literally google like activities in your city and i mean i know i live more in a metropolitan type of area so it is kind of easier to find things to do but a lot of people are lazy and we don't want to put any effort into getting ourselves out of our funk we just want to just kind of be woe is me even if you go to the movies by yourself like you can find something to do by yourself um but yeah, I'm going to finish my eyes real quick and pop on some lashes. Then I'm going to get back on camera and finish the rest of my face. Overall, it's just a good thing to know how to be in your own company. If you're constantly, if you want to people that has to like constantly wait on other people to do things or feel like you need other people to have fun or you got to be with other people to experience life, then you're going to be waiting forever. And it's just only adding towards you being unhappy. So regardless of Valentine's Day, in general like learn how to be by yourself learn how to do stuff by yourself and learn not to wait on others to feel like you need to um live life even after everything that i just said remember y'all that valentine's day is literally one day out of the year some people i mean i, I guess you know there's are people who just like really love to celebrate and that's their thing but yeah if you are one of those people definitely enjoy your day but to the singles who not really feeling it, it's not the end of the world. It's literally one day. Um, good thing about it this year, and a lot of years too, it always falls on like a weekday. So if you work, go to school, you're going to be there regardless. So you ain't going to really be, you're going to have something to kind of keep you distracted. And then it's going to be over and everybody going to forget about it until the following year. So yeah, y'all. It's don't stress yourself out, cause it's literally one day. Um, I've kind of had the chance to kind of experience different kinds of Valentine's days. So I've experienced it with being in a relationship, experienced it being single. Um, I've had like a few random Valentine's Day dates. And stuff like that. As far as like um, Valentine's Day, as far as like being in a relationship, I feel like if you're in a good, healthy relationship, you know, it's it's cool, it's fun. Um, I think I really only had like one val real Valentine's Day in a relationship, and the relationship overall wasn't that good. But um, our actual date. You know, the day of was pretty cool. So, yeah, that was fun. Like, it could be fun. Um, I've experienced Valentine's Day single, like I said, more times than I have in a relationship. And like I said, most of the times I'm at work, so it don't really matter. Because it's like, I'm about to be at work being an adult. So, it don't really mean nothing. Um, I've also, like, me and my friends, I've had times where we'll just, like, go out. And go have drinks, go have dinner with your girlfriends if you have some. That's honestly, I feel like those been the most fun Valentine's Day. Just kind of spending it with friends. Um, last year, I think I went on like a random, it was like a random lunch date. This guy that I had kind of was talking to a little bit, he invited me to go have lunch. Um, so, the food was good. That's all, that's all I can say about that. And that was one, that was one of them randoms. Like, if you wanted people where you have no intention on, like, if you just want to go out and have a date, like, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, those be cool, too, because sometimes it's like, I'm just here for the, for the free food. And as long as you're okay with that, and that's really all you want out of it, or you're not using it to, like feel some other kind of void I think that's perfectly fine as well um but yeah my my last I'm like I can't do no more random um Valentine's Day dates because this dude the actual date was cool we and both. the conversation I mean it was pretty regular like the conversation was decent but then later that day 
he was trying to even go to the hot tub with him and i'm like boy i didn't sign up for all of this i just signed up for the free food like this wasn't supposed to be that kind of um that kind of date but yeah that didn't really go anywhere i just really wasn't even into him i just i really went out with him to make somebody else jealous don't do that either um overall i think that some of my best valentine's day have been single i've been taking myself out on dates Make yourself a nice meal pour you a nice glass of wine basically do everything that you want your partner to do for you but do it for yourself go get your hair done go get your nails done do your makeup and then treat yourself to like a nice oh, went overboard a nice dinner um, i think that's pretty much all i really have i'm looking at my notes and that's all i really wrote down so yeah i'm about to finish the rest of my face um, I have been using a few new products. I started, um, I started, but I've been using, uh, the Fenty, the Fenty Beauty Concealer, and I'm using the color 385. That's what I use to highlight my face. And I've also been using, um, the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter loose setting powder and I use the color honey and that's what I use to set my highlight so far I really 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 like these two like this has been my go-to and the powder smells so good like it kind of has a perfumey scent to it um so yeah I really like the powder because of the smell now if you have sensitive skin and all that I don't know how that work for you but um yeah other than that I think that's really it so i'm just about to go ahead and power through the rest of my face i'm almost done anyways y'all know my actual face routine is pretty consistent all right guys so here is the final look um i wanted to do more of like a red a vibrant red but it looks more cranberry to me in the mirror i did use red eyeshadows but yeah it's just kind of picking up more cranberry almost a little pinkish um i can't really tell how it's picking up on camera but it's a beautiful look i like it um for my lips i just used my dark brown lip liner i used my butter gloss my nyx butter gloss in the color praline and then um my fenty glow on top and yeah so that's pretty much it let me know how you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and give it a big thumbs up and yeah thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time